Hello, so today I'm going to do a demonstration sort of show off video of one of these laser pens or chunky laser flashlights, whatever you want to call it. So this is a 2 watt supposedly sort of blue close to ultraviolet laser. Um, so it's not actually ultraviolet, but obviously some of the wavelength of it I imagine does cross into ultraviolet because it gives you archi, um, the reflection from it, well not the reflection because that would actually damage your eye, you know what I mean. So anyway, uh, Hype very kindly sent me this as a gift, um, you know where I've been buying other stuff from him, he sent me this as a gift, um, and I think he has these for sale, so if you don't know, because I have to answer this on every video, Hype also has the name Fregat, and he does, he did a video recently for my channel about, you know, Gen 1 versus Gen 2 versus Gen 3 night vision with light sort of protection mechanisms. Um, and he's quite active in sort of streams and that. So um, you can probably find a way of contacting him quite easily if you're interested in buying stuff from China through him, because sometimes he gets access to stuff you can't easily find on AliExpress or whatever, like Chinese surplus. Anyway, so what he sent me was this sort of laser pen thing. Now, obviously... Being Chinese, it's got Chinese instructions on that side, and it's got Chinglish instructions on this side. So high power blue light, so they can't even spell light properly, they didn't spell, check it. So obviously I don't know how many of these specs are correct, they haven't ticked the, um, you know, box. Basically what you're meant to do with these, as always, like most flashlights, although it's got some cooling in the case design, don't leave them on non-stop because they can burn out. Um, but this one should be the 20,000 milliwatt one, um, or sorry, 2,000 milliwatt, which is 2 watt. Um, so they do these apparently up to 5 watts, but I don't know if he's found those for sale yet. And it's 7.4 volts, so it takes two 16340 batteries, but knowing all the different battery variants you get, you might be able to get a longer one that's 7.4 volts in a single battery, I don't know. So anyway... What you get, obviously the case is a bit dented, is you get the flashlight sort of laser pen in there. You get a charger that obviously plugs into a US plug socket by the look of it. Um, but you can always use an adapter with it for um, the batteries. I've already got a charger for that that's a much safer one Hype sent me before. Where, you know, it basically cuts up and cuts down the voltage to batteries so they don't explode. Um, and what you also get, and I'll only briefly show these, is a pack of um, basically different, almost like filters, pattern things for the thing. Um, so if I show you what I mean. So basically, just to give you a quick idea of what the flashlight looks like, I'm going to put my safety glasses on. These aren't the highest end safety glasses, but you should always use them for high power lasers. Um, so what these do basically is they stop the worst of the light getting through. So there you go, that's the light with the glasses on, that doesn't look too bright to my eyes, you know, it looks like a dull sort of light. So there you go, it changes colour when you're wearing these, what surface it's on. So that's the flashlight, so basically how it's constructed is the battery compartment is in the back here. And you can see I've got two of the batteries in there like so, so they go in facing upwards. And then, there we go, there's the rolling away, there's the cap, so we'll put that back on. So to flick it on, it's a simple, basically, you push the back in like a flashlight. Um, then at the front, you can unscrew this bit, which is the, um, you know, actual focusing lens for it. So without that on, it's like one of those LED flashlight modules, but a laser one. And it looks like that without the focusing cap on, you know, a very right thing. Does that actually burn your skin like that? No, it's not concentrated enough. When this is on, it will actually burn you, um, being 2 watts. So, um, there we go. So then obviously when you put that on and tighten it fully, you get the little dot sort of version of it, as opposed to, um, you know, the... Um, full size one so how these filter sort of bits work is you get these and in the top they screw in here I'm not going to screw them fully in because sometimes they get a bit stuck with the design of this if you screw them fully in but so there's one screwed partially in and then what that does look is it basically lets you do little patterns let's just try another one if that comes out easy enough because yeah the first time I put one of these in annoyingly I screwed it in too tight and it wasn't cross threaded but it was a bit annoying to get out I'll just get them all out of this bag now Let's pick another one at random. Let's see what this one does. Again, they don't have anything written on these to actually say what the pattern is. Um, but yeah, let's screw this one in. And that, again, it's a different type of spirally pattern. So that's basically just, I guess, if you want to make sort of patterns in the sky or something with them. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do now, because I'm sure this is the bit people are going to be interested in with this, is 
try and either set stuff on fire or burn holes in things, which I know it will do. Because, for example, if I shine it at my hand like this, it actually burns. It's, it's like basically somebody's pushing a hot bit of metal into your hand, that's what it feels like. Um, but obviously darker coloured surfaces burn more easily with laser pens, I guess, because they absorb the light more easily. And what I did notice with this box is, with the polystyrene stuff, well, the foam, you can um, poke out some holes here, look. And then obviously what that lets you, lets you do is um, put those metallic um, filter bits in, which are all pushed to the back there now. So, um, yeah, I think you're probably meant to keep the middle bit in by the look of it. Hopefully this is all in frame, but yeah. So you probably take that bit out and then you put those in like that, I imagine. There we go. And then you've got those stored in there. Not the neatest of all things, because obviously it is sort of cheap foam for packing, but, you know, that's quite nice. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn the camera off, pack all this away, and then I'll get my glow-in-the-dark stuff out that we can set off with it, and we'll get maybe some of the little bits of foam like that to see if we can set them on fire, and it'll probably smell horrible. Now, what you can see there is a glow-in-the-dark sheet. Now, at the moment, I've not really charged it, so it's faintly glowing, but with this lighting, you probably can't see it. Now, this glow-in-the-dark sheet, if you're wondering where I got it, because it's a really big one, it's slightly folded here, it was one I bought on eBay from some arts and crafts place, and basically you could buy glow-in-the-dark sticker material in different sizes, so I bought the biggest sheet they did, which I think was under £20. So rather than cutting this up to make stickers from it, um, what I've been using it for is like playing about with ionising radiation and stuff like that, because this glow-in-the-dark material both reacts to visible light and things like x-rays and gamma rays and also very strongly to this laser pen, because obviously it's a very intense bit of light. So basically, to demonstrate, what you can do is, as you can see, you can draw an actual pattern, if you wanted to, onto the glow-in-the-dark material, which I find really cool. Now, obviously, the longer you leave it in one sort of area, the more intense it will glow in that area. Um, you know, I wouldn't think it would be very easy to do sort of detailed drawing like this, but... Um, you know, it is a cool thing to be able to sort of draw a pattern on the um, glow-in-the-dark material. And then obviously that will fade over a few hours, and um, eventually, you know, what will happen is it will, um, you know, if you turn a bright light on, it will reset it in a sense. And that's one of the cool things you can do with this laser pen. Um, obviously the weaker laser pens wouldn't have anywhere near as much impact on that. Right, on the floor in front of there, you might be able to see, because it's hard for me to see with my... Um, glow, you know, protect me from burning my eyes out glasses, I've got some black bits of foam from that kit, so what I'm going to do now is lay this flat like that and see if I can get the beam of this to hit one of them. There we go. And is that going to cause it to burn at all? I think there's some smoke coming off of it. It might have just burnt the corner, let's flick that off again. You can actually see there where it's... Oh, have I burnt a hole in the glow-in-the-dark sheet? I think I have. So, yeah, there's actually a burn there on the sheet because the laser's been on one spot for too long. So there you go. That's actually burnt a mark into the glow-in-the-dark sheet, unfortunately. I suppose that's a cool thing to demonstrate what happens if you leave that on for too long in one area, and that's a pretty bright glow even to the camera um, in this darkness. So let me try that actually just against a section of skirting board or whatever. So I'll do it in the corner. Oh, that's a pretty horrible smell, probably quite toxic. So there you go, you can see that's in that corner. Let's see if I can get this aimed at that. There we go. And yet there's some horrible sort of acrid smoke coming off of that. I don't know how well you can see that, but I won't do that too long because it's a pretty horrible smell. So yeah, that, that definitely burns this foam stuff. I'll go get a little bit of cardboard now so we can test it on some cardboard. Right, I've got a bit of an Amazon box and a Mini, Me Mini Eggs Easter Egg box, because obviously Easter's been and gone. Um, so what I might do actually is once I've done these tests, I might edit this video together and upload it for Friday, that will be tomorrow, and I might just do a nighttime video of this as like a YouTube short. But here we go, so let's try the brown Amazon parcel bit on the right. I don't know at what distance this is the most efficient at burning things. You can see there's smoke now, because you can see that the uh, beam's getting more and more visible. Let me just flick that off and see what it's done. Yep, there you go. There is a singed hole there, look. So yeah, that has worked. 
Now at different distances this probably works better than others so let's put that back again and now this time let's put the laser pen closer. I don't actually know at which distance the focal point is for this laser pen because with laser pens I've seen in the past sometimes they work better at different distances than others. Let's flick that off again and yet yeah, we've got another hole and I'd say this one probably burnt a bit more efficiently. Now what I can also do if you're interested is stick the paper up like that. We can put the la uh, torch there, laser pen like that. That's all in frame, yeah. Then if I flick this on, when it burns through you'll be able to see on the camera when the beam suddenly shoots to the other side. Which hopefully shouldn't take too long. I think that's gone through now because it looks like you can see light going into the mini egg box. Yeah, I can definitely see the light going through to the other side. So let's flick that off because as I said, don't want to overheat this. And as you can see, it's got another smouldering hole there. So well done that. And the mini eggs box hasn't got a burn really on it yet there. Right, now let's just see what it does to this mini eggs box. So let's try it about a metre away and we'll aim it so the beam is definitely actually on the box, not the carpet. Let me just readjust the focus a bit. Yeah, so I'm trying to work out what distance it is where you get the finest point of the dot. Probably this distance, I imagine. And as you can see, there's, you can probably see on the camera there's some smoke coming off of there. And yeah, that's uh, that's burning through all right. Let's flick that off and have a look. So yeah, there's the burn hole there, as you can see. So obviously, as I said, the darker the colour of the card, the more efficient it is at um, burning. What I suppose I could also do is try one like this. Let's see, is that in frame? No, let me just get that in frame. So sticking the laser pen like that and then shooting it upwards through. So you can probably see now there's a blue glow coming out of there. It looks almost like there's, um, to my eyes with the goggles on, it looks almost like there's um, sort of a, what do you call it, happening. I'm trying to think of the word for it. Criticality accident happening. I think it's probably burning through now as the light's changing a bit. Yeah, the light's on the door behind. There we go. So that's burnt through. Let's flick it back off. And if you look on that side, there should be a singeing hole somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where that is. There it is, on the label, so it's hard to see. So yeah, there we go. This laser pen does certainly um, burn things. Now, just because it's generally harder for like, laser pens to burn white card, I want to see how well this sets white card alight, or, you know, at least singes it. So let's try and get the camera to refocus, because at the moment the camera looks like it's autofocus is struggling. There we go. Right, let's pop this back on. And there we go. So yeah, you can probably see it's actually taking a lot longer to start smoking when you do it with a um, white piece of card. And that's just because it basically reflects more of the um, light off of it, where darker you know, colours absorb it better. Yeah, is that smouldering at all? I'm not sure. No, I think that's <coughs> not actually burning that. Now, it might at a different distance, whatever it is, where it's the more focused bit of the beam. But yeah, I think it's because you need to have it a certain distance for the focus to be right. Now, I'm not sure exactly what distance that is to get a proper spot with this. It might be even a bit further away. But, yeah, as I said, the only thing I find a bit of a flaw with this, and it's not a massive thing, is the um, focusing cup, if I demonstrate this on there. The focusing cup um, isn't as good as I've seen on some other laser pens of similar designs to this before. Like, I've had some that go to a much finer point than this one. Um, also, for some reason, I don't know if it's just a design of the LED, as you can see, when this isn't focused, it makes more of a rectangle shape, where previous laser pens I've had make much much more of like a uniform, regular sort of flashlight circle when they're not focused. But yeah, it seems it struggles to burn through white card. 
So if ever in the future you want to protect yourself from laser weapons, I guess you're meant to have white plastic armour like stormtroopers. Although that doesn't actually work in Star Wars, does it? But in comparison, and obviously I imagine the more you use this, the faster it drains the batteries and therefore the less power it's outputting. So I'll give the batteries a charge after I finish this video. But I imagine if I then put it again on that bit of card, it'll probably start burning through much faster. Assuming I've got the distance right. Yeah, I think the pen's already looking duller, so I think the batteries are um, already... Yeah, that's nowhere near as bright as it used to be. So, yeah, I thankfully don't think that's me burning out the um, actual flashlight. I think that's just um, the fact the batteries need a charge, so I'm going to give them a charge after this. I might see if I can buy some higher capacity little batteries that fit this, that way you don't need to charge it or bring as many spares with you, but obviously 2 watts is going to drain little sort of high voltage batteries pretty quickly. But if you're interested, um, just to show you, so there's, there's the laser beam, if I get that sort of on there, yeah that's definitely getting dimmer. What the glasses do look is they do that, so basically they massively lower the brightness of it. So obviously these aren't the most efficient ones, you pay a lot more money, you get ones that block it out, you know, a lot more efficiently. But the point of the safety glasses is basically, you know, they stop you um, getting reflections from the light going back into your eye and causing, you know, eye damage as easily. So I would always recommend if you're playing with a laser pen that's stronger than probably one milliwatt to get some proper, um, you know, safety goggles. Like I said, these aren't the best, but, you know, I'm not dumb enough to shine this in a mirror when I'm looking at it. But, you know, the amount of videos I found on YouTube of people using no safety glasses, shining lasers on reflective surfaces, and you think, you know, some of them like three or five watt lasers, and you think, oh Christ, what are you doing? You know, you're going to burn your eyes out. But anyway, there you go. That's this um, Chinese two watt laser pen. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll let you know if it burns itself out or something stupid really quickly. But the heat sink seems to be doing a pretty good job on it. And I said it's, you know, just a pretty cool thing to get, um, you know, a laser pen that pretty easily burns stuff. Now, just as a test, because obviously it feels weaker, and this is a stupid thing to do, let me shine it on my hand. Yeah, it's not burning my skin anymore, or it feels slightly warm, but yeah, it's not, not as intense as it was before, but there you go.